This meeting is being recorded. All righty. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the first live webinar presentation of the 2022 Hidalgo County Employee Winter Wellness Fair. I will be starting off this webinar with a sound check. If you can hear me clearly, please click the raised hand icon. Again, if you can hear me clearly, please click the raised hand icon. Alrighty, awesome. Thank you so much. Um, before we get started, I would like to let everyone know that attendees do not have a microphone feature on this webinar. If you have any questions, please utilize the chat box feature or the Q&A feature, and we will answer questions at the end of the webinar. Thank you very much. Our speaker uh, this morning is Ms. Bedla Cisneros from Vera Whole Health. Uh, Ms. Bedla Cisneros uh, plays an integral role on the primary care team and works collaboratively with diverse patient populations to engage them in their health and well-being. As an IAHC certified health and wellness coach, Ms. Bedla Cisneros is passionate about creating a safe and supportive space for patients to honor their needs, find their inner strength, and manifest their authentic truth. Emphasizing each of her patients' unique life experiences, goals, and dreams, Bedla creates a coaching plan that supports and empowers them in moving forward toward living their best life. In addition to providing a deep and meaningful coaching experience to her patients, she also serves to inspire, guide, motivate, and hold them accountable to attain their goals and sustain the positive changes they've identified in their lives. Holding a Master of Science in Health Coaching with a concentration in Applied Nutrition, Bedla has worked with hundreds of individuals around the world on living intentionally, turning into their inner voice, cultivating self-love, and making space for self-care so they can live their best lives. She also brings a healing presence to her work through compassion, empathy, deep listening, and communication skills, as well as her training in plant-based cooking, positive psychology, mindfulness, and meditation. Thank you so much for joining us, Ms. Bedla. Thank you, Diana. How are you? Thank you. Doing well. Doing really well this morning, actually. So we're getting started here at the Wellness Fair and everything's looking great. Thank you. Awesome. So we're ready to start. Yes, ma'am. Anytime you're okay. ready. Okay, great. Okay, good morning, everyone. Um, well, uh, the subject for today is the role of macro and micronutrients in our diet. I want to show a disclaimer. You know, I am not an expert. I have gathered all of the material to present um, just for us to be able to have a basic knowledge. Um, so the presentation will be about um, creating more awareness, right, in what the role of the macro and micronutrients are and how it plays in our diet and as well as some food sources that we can add in our daily meals, all right? So, um, so as we eat food, right, um, and we digest it in the body, um, this is allowing us to have energy and the nutrients. And some of the nutrients that we receive from this food are essential, um, but then others are considered non-essential. So there are two types of nutrients in the macro and micronutrients. And basically they help us to regulate our body functions, repair our body tissues, promote growth, and the main thing is to obtain energy. So macronutrients constitute the majority of an individual's diet. So we have mainly it's the carbohydrates, the proteins and the fats. These are your essential nutrients needed for growth and energy. And so what do we know about carbohydrates? I think we have have the media has created throughout the years that carbs are bad for us. And there's a misconception about them. And we hear keto everywhere, right? Low carb diet without realizing something. Um, they are just the easy, quick source of energy that we need for us to be able to do our, all our body functions, right? Particularly our brain functions, all right? Um, and they're necessary for the metabolism of other nutrients. And it's also the easiest form of food to convert into energy and it feels as well as our workout performance. So how does this energy function in the body? 
Well, um, we know that we need it, you know, to sustain, right? To keep us moving throughout the day, um, giving us that energy to run all our organ systems, um, to go to work, to be able to work out, to think, right? But also helps with our digestion, regular bowel movements, uh, keeping even uh, sleeping patterns, for example, maintaining that brain function, the nervous system, and as well as hormone systems. So carbohydrates are categorized in two main categories. We have simple carbs, simple carbohydrates, and we also have complex carbohydrates. So the simple carbohydrates are basically simple sugars. And this is where we find them in fruits and processed sugars. And they break down very quickly in the body, making them a good source for quick energy. Not necessarily that it's the best one, right? Um, complex carbohydrates are, this is where it includes the starches, the fiber, these are your complex sugars, right? They will take longer to break down in the body and they will provide a more even distribution of energy um, throughout the day, you know, for longer periods of time. So foods that contain carbohydrates provide a variety of other important nutrients to the diet, you know, such as your vitamins, your minerals, um, antioxidants, and they occur naturally in fruits and vegetables, um, dairy fruits, um, dairies, and, and as well as grains. All right, so I'm gonna give you an example of some carbohydrates, okay? Uh, I'm sure you're familiar with the left-hand side, right? Pan de dulce, right? So here's my personal share with you. So I notice when I eat pan de dulce in the morning for breakfast, um, so there's definitely loads of sugar in there, right? More than substance. I get a really, sh uh, I get a very short spurt of energy, you know? Um, I'm excited, I'm, I'm ready to, to go with my day, right? I'm happy because I had a, a concha, for example, right? But then after about an hour or so, I'm extremely hungry, right? Um, and then I'm noticing that I'm very impatient, getting tired. Maybe I go and reach out a cup of coffee thinking, hey, this is gonna keep me awake, right? And get me to be alert. But in reality, this is just depleting me more, you know, that's gonna dehydrate me more, um, you know, from, from water, you know, in, in, my, in my system. Um, however, recently I've been eating um, a savory oatmeal, all right? And I know it sounds a little bit strange to do the savory because we normally eat oatmeal as um, hot and warm with sugar or with cinnamon, right? But the savory one is more, a little bit more on the salty side or at least um, not sugary, right? And um, so if I'm adding some eggs to it and some veggies, then I can find that I'm sustained for at least four hours, you know, or plus, right, throughout uh, the morning. Um, I, I'm not hungry as, as fast, right? I'm more focused. Um, I have more clear thinking, right? And I'm still happy because I had a delicious meal. Mm -hmm. So... And, so, and simple carbohydrates break down very quickly in the body, making them, you know, a good source of quick and energy, like my pan de dulce, right? But the glucose breaks down very quickly. So, which gives me a rapid rise, right, in my high blood, in my blood sugar, and then a very rapid fall, right? So that's when my energy starts crashing, right? But in my complex carb um, example of my oatmeal, right? Um, my rolled oats in here, the glucose takes a slower route to break down, yeah? Leading to a steadier blood level of, of sugar 
And this keeps me sustained for longer periods of time with more energy and definitely more focused. So my question to you is, which one would you rather have? Do you wanna have that quick energy right away and be happy for about an hour? Or do you wanna have a more sustained meal where it's going to keep you more focused, more alert, nourished, and you know that it's not going to be spiking up your insulin levels? Of course, that is a choice to make. So here's um, some ideas for us to look at how we could swap, right? Um, what we're normally used to, you know, having uh, something sugary maybe in, for breakfast, right? Or, or even not sugary, but a more processed type of carbohydrate. So for example, um, white bread. If we're gonna have some toast in the morning, um, let's make it into a healthier choice, a more wholesome type of choice, right? So how about swapping it for a whole wheat bread, right? And there's tons of varieties out there. Um, it's always good to look at the labels to read how many sugars it's got, right? And, but a wholesome whole wheat, hundred percent, that's a great way to go, right? Um, if you're eating pan de dulce or a donut or a muffin in the morning, um, maybe swapping it, you know, for that oatmeal, right? Uh, when it comes to oatmeal, it's preferably to go with the steel cut or the old fashioned oats or the rolled oats, because those are the less processed. When we go into the little packages that we dissolve with water or with milk, those are extremely processed and they already they already cut down on the nutritional value. That means that uh, the grain, it doesn't have the intact form of the fiber. So, and they're also loaded with sugar. They tend to be loaded with sugar. Um, and then um, this is not for breakfast, but as a snack, if we normally take some chips, uh, we all get into that little bag of potato chips, maybe swapping it with kale chips which are very easy to make. We roast them in the oven uh, for a few minutes. We add a little bit of olive oil. We cut them up and massage them with the olive oil. And uh, we put a little bit of sea salt perhaps or some paprika or any kind of spices that you, that you like. And um, they become really crunchy and they're a great source of energy and as well, a, uh, a very healthy snack, okay? So definitely we're looking for carbohydrates that are more wholesome, they're nutrient dense, right? Instead of uh, the processed uh, and refined sugars or um, other flours, right? All right, so I like to think about carbohydrates in ways that we could be creative, right? So choosing whole natural foods um, rather than processed or box foods, right? Um, when we have the opportunity, I know that we have very busy lifestyles um, and sometimes that is almost impossible to be, to be doing, right? But if we do a little bit of planning ahead of time, we can, we can get to that. Uh, so the more we go into these whole foods, there's more nutrients, definitely, and there's going to be more fiber that you're going to be getting out of it. So choosing unrefined grains, right? Um, as I mentioned before, those oatmeals that come in the little oatmeal that comes in the little packages ready to go, those are more refined, right? But instead, if we we choose the the ones that are more wholesome, like the steel cut or the rolled oats, that will be a better choice, right? Keeping the fiber intact in it, uh, as well as in fruits. So whole fruits, um, yeah, they, they're a quick, they're a simple sugar, but at the same time, there's a lot of fiber, there's a lot of vitamins, um, there is going to be antioxidants, and definitely the fiber is intact. As opposed to when we juice them, for example, then we remove all that fiber. We need that fiber, right, for uh, different functions in the body, primarily digestion, but also to keep us fuller, right? 
Um, vegetables, right? We keep hearing vegetables, vegetables. Sometimes we don't like to eat vegetables, uh, but vegetables are complex carbohydrates, right? They're going to keep us fuller for longer periods of time. Um, and then they're going to have a whole lot of vitamins and minerals and, of course, antioxidants, which protect us from the free radicals that are out there, uh, protect us from cancer as well. And they help with inflammation in the body. They protect, heal, and repair, right? So having a balanced combination on the plate, right? Um, so we think about a nine-inch plate. Half of that plate should be, this is what uh, the USDA uh, plate and also the healthy eating plate from Harvard recommends. Um, half of the plate should be vegetables. And a little bit of that, half of it, includes some of that, um, some of that fruit, what we talked about earlier. And the other half of it, we're gonna divide it into one fourth of protein, lean protein, and the other one fourth of grains. Um, and this is where it comes, you know, maybe the rice or, or quinoa, barley, for example. Um, so having that um, combination, and maybe we can also do legumes with a little bit of that grain, right? Or lentils, or maybe fish, for example, or another type of lean protein with some veggies, right? Drizzling some olive oil, let's say. Uh, combining whole grains with legumes with the protein and also doing some, following some portions. So portion control, it's gonna help us to um, feel lighter definitely. Um, and one way to also um, abstaining for some of the richer carbohydrates is just adding more vegetables, another serving of vegetables. So now we're gonna go into our protein. So the other essential nutrient that we need for growth and for an energy and repairing and keeping our cells healthy and also for fueling our, our muscle recovery is going to be protein. Um, so, so once we have, uh, we're ingesting the protein, there's going to be, uh, it's gonna be breaking it down, right? Into peptides, and amino acids. You probably heard about amino acids and, you know, helping with growth. And um, so the main takeaway from that is that the amino acids, there's about a total of about 20 amino acids and our body makes 11 of them, right? The remaining nine of them are called the essential amino acids, right? And those, we're not producing them, but we're getting them from foods that we eat. So this is where it comes for us to be creative on what type of protein that we're also trying to choose. There's two categories for protein. So we have complete protein and we have incomplete protein. So what is the complete protein? A complete protein is gonna come from animal product. They're gonna contain all of the amino acids, the whole profile of them. Um, the incomplete comes from plant sources, all right? And these plant sources are going to be your grains, your beans, um, your lentils, your cereals, and they have fewer of the amino acids. However, we can always be creative in combining uh, a protein with a grain to make a complete um, profile of the amino acid. So proteins have ratings, right? And in this um, slide, we can see that on top of the list with a hundred rating, we have X. X is a very, very complete, um, the highest rating, right? Um, so you see on that top of the list, you have all of the animal source um, for dietary protein. Um, and then getting from the middle towards the bottom, we have definitely the ones that are plant-based, right? And health professionals are concerned about the amount of saturated fat that, that it's common in the foods that are animal protein. 
and they advise as well for us to be able to include some vegetable protein. So um, here's an example of where, what we mean by plant protein and a whole display of different animal source protein. So the health, um, the health benefits of having plant proteins is that there is more fiber, all right? Um, they will be creating less inflammation in the body. And there's definitely a wide range variety of uh, vitamins, of minerals and antioxidants. And also they're gonna have a very low cholesterol and unhealthy fats, okay? All right, so these are the general recommendations. Of course, the, you always should be um, um, consulting with your provider for this, but the general recommendation that we have is that 10 to 15% of our total energy should come from proteins. So that's two to three servings of animal protein foods uh, or four servings of a mixed um, vegetable with a protein source, uh, whole grains, cereals, um, legumes, nuts, seeds can easily provide the needed protein. And we now transition into our third form of um, macronutrient, which is um, fats. Also fats have been throughout decades demonized we shouldn't eat fats, then it comes back and says, oh yeah, it's okay to include fats, right? But there's different categories and sources of fats. But the main thing to remember right now is to think about is why is it that we need fats, right? Why are they essential in, in our growth and for us to be able to metabolize and to be able to have it as a source of energy as well? Um, first of all, they're going to keep our skin and our hair uh, healthy. There are sources of um, vitamins. There's going to be help, helping you, us to absorb better vitamins A, D, K, um, and E. And also, they serve as an insulator. They keep us warm, okay? Um, helping our brain to grow and adapt this new information and new experiences that we have on a daily basis. Um, and also one thing is to help and regulate our body sugar so their energy levels, they stay even instead of bouncing all over the place, you know, just like the sugars, right? And keeping us fuel satisfied and so that we don't overeat. So one good way for us to do in breakfast is to have a protein with a fat. And that is going to be optimizing that source of, of energy, okay? So three, three primary functions for fats is that um, they're a major source of energy in the body. Um, they also protect us um, in our organs. They serve as a cushion for our organs and they act as an insulator, right? For the body heat, uh, protecting us against excessive cold and then promoting definitely the body, the vitamin absorption. Okay, so we're gonna talk a little bit more. We're gonna look a little bit closer into the fats now. Um, so we've heard words like saturated, monosaturated, omega-3s, omega-6 six, and trans fats, right? And if we look on the left-hand side, uh, this is the typical foods that we find the saturated. Um, for the monosaturated, we have definitely all the nuts, right? And the types of oils that go with that, olives, avocados, right? We hear um, when we go to the provider, they say, well, include more of your omegas into your diet. Uh, you need to be able to lower your tri triglycerides or your, your bad cholesterol. You need to include more omegas into your diet. 
Well, the good sources of omegas definitely are going to be coming from fatty fish, okay? And this is also going to be from nuts, right? And um, in all of their oils. And then we have the trans fats. And those are the ones we typically um, have in processed food, right? So these are vegetable oils that have undergone, you know, the process of um, to be hydrogenated. And those are the ones that are present in our baked goods and chips, uh, French fries, that kind of thing, right? So this table right here, it shows for us to be able to see where we need to be a little bit more mindful when it comes to the foods that we're selecting, okay? So the composition of the fats in this particular table is, it gives, you, gives us a better uh, overview. But one thing to really take into consideration is that foods that contain a high proportion of saturated fats, like butter, like lard, if we're thinking about the seasoned tamales, for example, right? Um, this is the type of solid fat, right? That is going to be coming from animal um, product, right? And then um, the unsaturated fats, those are the ones that we should be able to procure more, right? And these, as I mentioned, the omegas, and definitely it's going to be um, the healthy fats coming also from nuts. So fats help us, they give us energy, right? Um, and we saw in the previous slide, right, how the, the, the types of fat that we have for each one of them. Um, and if we look at this uh, slide right here and we see this picture, we notice that there is a lot of super healthy fats, right? Uh, avocados, salmon, right? Different types of nuts, olives. Yeah, olives is also a good source, olive oil right? We have different types of seeds, right? So these types of fats, the monounsaturated fats, um, they're going to be eating them in the right, right amounts. They may reduce the cholesterol um, in the LDL, which is your the bad, the bad cholesterol, right? And by eating too many of the polyunsaturated um, fats, we can also help to lower that cholesterol and it gives us a much better even distribution of energy. Okay, so definitely trans fats are gonna raise our cholesterol. Not all fats are good, right? What we should think about is limiting the trans fats, right? Because they can raise that cholesterol and also the risk for heart disease and for stroke. So these are all our big goods, right? All of the things that are partially hydrogenated in the vegetable oils, the vegetable shortening. Um, so trying to limit these foods, right? With these ingredients um, so that we can avoid raising that cholesterol. All right. So does it mean that there is no place for any of these things in our diets? Absolutely not, right? Um, the fact is that our diet can be very diverse, right? Um, definitely, we're going to be going for the poly and the monounsaturated, um, receiving it from those healthy oils, the nuts, the fatty fish, the avocado, the um, olives, for example, right? but then limiting more of the saturated, you know, that comes like from um, cheese and from butter, right? And creams. And the ones that are definitely the tropical oils and the hydrogenated um, fats are going to be, you know, all of the big goods, right? Uh, all of the processed food that it's out there, you know, chips and um, um, sweets, right? And definitely, French fries, all of that processed food. Um, and the main thing to remember is that, do we want our cholesterol to stay uh, even or do we want it to raise? Obviously the answer is we want it to be stable, right? 
So then you can make a more informed decision. All right, so putting it all together, what we just learned about macronutrients, right? Um, the takeaway in here is for us to include whole foods and not process, or at least limiting, right? Um, combining the macros in a meal where there is fat, there is protein, and there's carbs when possible. So if we look at the example right here, we have, um, we have different types of bread, right? Uh, well, practically the same type of bread, but with different options, right? And some savory and some of them sweet. So to wrap up, the main takeaway is that proteins and fats they're important for our bodies to thrive, right? And we discussed it in different ways to make the right choice for you, right? Um, definitely, this is not to say that the donuts and the burgers or the pasta don't have a place in our, in our diets, right? But through the understanding of how the differences of the simple carbohydrates and the complex carbo carbohydrates, um, you can make a more um a better decision about what you want to include right and at the end of the day you will do what works best for you right so just monitoring our macros right can ensure that we're eating enough not just calories but the right combination of food so instead of focusing on how many calories are in a meal maybe we can play we can plan a meal based on what we're actually uh, eating it like half of that plate with the vegetables and the fruit, one fourth of the protein and the one fourth of the grains. Um, and also we can look at uh, what the healthier options are out there, right? Um, so this is for us to be able to make that informed decision. So now we're coming to the macronutrients, right? Um, how much should we include in here? So the federal acceptable macronutrient distribution range uh, suggests that this is the percentages that we should have in our diets. 45 to 65% should come from carbohydrates. Remember, it's from carbohydrates that we're gonna get our, our, our energy immediately. Uh, 20 to 35 is from fats and 10 to 35 is from proteins, yeah? Um, the Dietary Guidelines for Americans and, and that guideline from 2020 to 2025 suggest similar values. Um, but also they, they note something that a person's macronutrients can include current weight, fitness goals, existing health conditions, and definitely um, current uh, muscle mass. So, but this is roughly the average, okay? All right, so we're transitioning now to micronutrients. So macro is the bigger, so the, the part that we need, those carbohydrates, those proteins, those fats, and now into micronutrients, we're, we're zooming in, right? So this is basically talking about our vitamins and uh, minerals that we need for us to be able to um, be able to thrive as well, right? Um, but they're only required in small amounts. So vitamins are very organic, very small substances that we ingest through our foods, right? And that help our, the reactions in our bodies. So although micronutrients are needed in small amounts, if we have a deficiency, also can lead to critical health issues, right? Um, so there are two types, two groups of vitamins. We have the fat soluble vitamins that can be stored in the body, like for example, vitamin A, vitamin D. And then we have the water soluble ones, which cannot be stored in the body uh, and therefore they're required daily. So these are your B vitamins and vitamin C. Now, antioxidants are vitamins and they help our, our cells are from damage, right? From all those free radicals out there and from the, the normal aging process um, and different types of cancer. 
So I'm going to uh, zoom into vitamin A. You know, we vitamin A is essential for us, um, keeping our skin, keeping our, our, our eyes and resistant to infections. Our vitamin D, which we're very familiar with, we get it through the sunlight, right? Uh, for being exposed 10 minutes um, outdoors. And we get it through our eyes, by the way, okay? Uh, this, is, this will help with the absorption of calcium, uh, keeping our bones, our, our teeth healthy and strong, right? Um, definitely it's through the summer months and the sources for this is going to be from oily fish, from meat, from eggs as well. All right, zooming in into the B vitamins, we hear a lot about them. Um, so there's many different types of B vitamins, uh, but they have specific functions in the body. So I'm going to be zooming into four, uh, three of them right now. Okay, so we have um, vitamin B1. Okay, so this is... Um, this is going to be helping us with energy, uh, release the energy from carbohydrate, but it also helps us in the normal function of the nervous system. So some food sources that we can get them is from whole grains, uh, from nuts, from um, even from meat, especially from pork, um, some fruits and vegetables definitely, and fortified breakfast cereals, okay? So when we go to the vitamin B2, um, it's required for release energy from protein, from carbohydrate and fat. And it can also be involved in helping us to transport and use iron in the body. So some sources of that would be um, some milk, uh, eggs, um, rice, legumes, different types of vegetables, definitely. Uh, green vegetables, right? We have an example in there of mushrooms. And then for vitamin B3, right? Um, required for the release of energy from food. And so this is the function of our nervous system, the mucous membranes, the skin. And sources for that will be whole wheat, uh, flour, eggs, dairy products. And I'm also including vitamin C, uh, which is another important vitamin that we need, uh, important for our immune system, uh, anytime that we have a small cut so that it would repair um, immediately and with the absorption also of iron. Um, we find them definitely in fruits um, that are especially from the citrus family and definitely from green vegetables, uh, from peppers, from tomatoes, um, even from potatoes. All right, so we're coming to the part where we have minerals, okay? So um, minerals are very in, they have different functions, definitely. These are gonna be um, um, different requirements that we need as well. Um, there are two types of iron and that we have. And these are from animal sources, for example, from liver, from red meat. And we have other ones that are coming from plants, plant sources, like dark green leafy vegetables. Um, and um, definitely iron is essential for the formation of hemoglobin in the red blood cells. And the red blood cells, they carry the oxygen and transport it around the body. So it's, it's a very essential mineral. It is also required for the metabolism, removing um, wa waste substances in the body. So definitely um, very important mineral to, to have. And then of course, calcium, which we're very familiar uh, with calcium. The, the body contains more calcium than any other mineral and definitely is required and essential for a number of important functions. Um, maintaining our bones, as we mentioned earlier, uh, our strong bones, strong teeth, right? 
blood clotting, normal muscle function. And we know the sources are from, from eggs, from cheese, uh, from milk. So to have um, the quantities, the daily requirements for this, well, people would have different requirements. So that this will be according to age, according to gender, and definitely according to physiological state. For example, a pregnant woman would have different needs. So in summary, um, vitamins and minerals, they have um, an important role um, we have um, definitely a way for us to be able to get them through four different food, food sources. And supplementation is not necessary if, if an individual's diet is wholesome, it's uh, nutrient dense, and it's well balanced, we should be able to get them. That doesn't mean that we don't need to get supplementation. Um, through different types of tests, we can also find out if we have any deficiencies. So if your provider orders um, a test on vitamin D levels, right, or vitamin v, uh, B, um, then they can determine if you need further supplementation or if you should improve your diet, right, to be able to include them from the nutrient-dense uh, sources. And we talked about also the macronutrients and that is for us to be able to get them from our carbohydrates, our proteins, our, our fats, right? And the main important thing is that they provide energy that are needed in large amounts. So this will be able to give us a complete um, sense of how we can uh, distribute our intake of food, right? When we are choosing our macronut macronutrients to take into consideration uh, definitely the types of fat that we're choosing, the types of protein that we're, um, we're eating, and also to be able to be mindful of simple carbohydrates and complex carbohydrates. And remember, be creative, you know, be creative by choosing uh, lots of greens, vegetables, where we're going to be able to find them, to be able to choose um, less refined ones, more wholesome, more nutrient dense, more, more whole, right? And this concludes our presentation for the macro and macronutrients, and we're open for discussion. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ms. Bedla. You're welcome. Um, thank, and yes, it was a, a very informative presentation, um, and there's a lot of really good information in there. Um, we will now go ahead and open up the presentation uh, to our audience for a Q&A &A session. So we do already have some questions here. Um, we have one asking um, that she has a shake that she takes in the morning um, with oatmeal, fruits, flaxseed, moringa, apple cider vinegar, and she adds milk. She asks if this is like a healthy enough um, breakfast or uh, assuming she makes takes it in the morning, but um, a healthy enough meal option or would she need to add anything to, I guess, make it a more balanced meal? Wow, this is a really nice breakfast from this participant. I like that. Um, and this participant must have a lot of time in the morning or is <laughs> super organized, right? Um, um, so yes, Moringa definitely is one of those superfoods. Oatmeal, we discussed about oatmeal right now, be having, um, it's being a great choice for us to be able to add the fiber, there is protein in there. And my question for this participant, if she's choosing uh, rolled oats or steel cut oats or the ones from the little packages, right? Mm -hmm. So as I mentioned before, um, choose the one that it's coming um, more entire, right? More, more whole. That's your best thing. This is an excellent form of being able to get um, all your antioxidants, lots of vitamins in here, and for sure to have a very wholesome breakfast that is going to keep your blood sugars very even and very stable, and you're not going to be hungry for a couple of hours. As yes. opposed to, remember the example that I showed about the, the pan de dulce, the concha? Mm -hmm. After an hour, 
you get a crash, right? Crash. With this, oh, with this, definitely this liquado, this smoothie that your this participant is uh, making, um, it's going to have a very, very stable um, blood sugar. So yes. congratulations on that. <laughs> Which reminds me, um, if the if anybody has tried um, cold oatmeal, right? Oh, oh, the overnight oats the overnight yes, oats those yes. are good. anybody out there you know or any anyone that it has shared recipes before mm -hmm. or welcome you know the suggestions as well those are really good i actually make some that have um, cacao powder so i try mm -hmm. to go that that more natural option um, adding in a little cacao powder a little yogurt for the probiotics um, and then i add strawberries as well so um, Yummy. make it kind of chocolatey strawberry that option yeah really and you know what we all have our things right like some of mm -hmm. us are very chocolate kind of yeah. addicted right or peanut butter addicted, right? Mm -hmm. Or we just want the sugary feeling, right? Like the pan right. de dulce. So peanut butter is a great way to add it in there or any type of nut butter. Mm -hmm. um, and then for those that are being very mindful, if you have, um, if you're mindful of sugar because you're in the pre-diabetic stage or in the diabetic stage, right? Um, there's forms to add sugar, not just from fruit, but healthier choices, not just from honey, but maybe a little bit of dates. Yes. And they have Love loads it. of potassium, right? Mm -hmm. And loads super of fun. fiber. Yeah. And super yeah. flavorful. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Lots of options to do that. Yes. Excellent. We have another question. Um, mm -hmm. Someone asks, are whole wheat wraps a healthy option? I know you mentioned about like whole grains and everything. So she's asking about whole wheat wraps. Absolutely. And um, whole wheat wraps um, definitely are going to be more wholesome, right? Mm -hmm. my, my, my recommendation is to always look at the back label of that package, right? Mm -hmm. Because there, there's so many choices out there, right? And it's very difficult to discern, like, which one is the best one? Is mm -hmm. it the brand from the store the, the best one? Or is it the one that says natural and wholesome and keto and low fat? It just bombards us with all these buzzwords, right? Mm -hmm. um, but the, the one thing that it doesn't fail is for us to look at the reverse side of a package. So this is not a keto or, or, any, or, or the wrap that we're talking about. But if we look at this particular part of the package, right? Mm -hmm. It's going to give us the profile, right? Of what the ingredients are. But one thing to just mainly focus on is the sugar. So if you look at the sugar um, on that wrap, if it says um, more than five grams, mm -hmm. I would reconsider looking for another wrap. If it's under that, that's awesome. But then again, it's just a matter of shopping around, right? Okay, awesome. Well, thank you so much. Um, mm -hmm. One last question. Um, what's the best oil to use for cooking? I know that there's some different options. You have like extra virgin olive oil, avocado. We also have like coconut. I know you mentioned like butter and lard are, you know, usually not the best types to use um, if you're wanting to go for a healthier option. What would you, what is kind of recommended? That's an excellent question. Well, of course, lard, it's, it's kind of like, you know, culturally, you know, mm -hmm. the tamales, we have them and people would say, you know, you can't make tamales without lard, right? Or without that type of, um, type of fat. Um, but definitely for us to cook is for us to be able to choose things that are going to be, um, keeping the high intensity of the temperature. Mm -hmm. And one that works really well, it's avocado oil. Okay. Um, and then the other one is going to be um, olive oil. Extra virgin olive oil, don't waste it in cooking. Okay. Uh, keep it in your salads, keep, keep it for drizzling, um, for you to be able to eat it in the, in the purest form right? Okay. Uh, rather than heating it, right? Uh, but if you're going to be using olive oil, then use the 
olive oil, but not the extra virgin olive oil, which tends to be more expensive right away, right? Mm -hmm. um, butter, who doesn't like to have saute vegetables with a little bit of butter? Again, you know, if we're being, if we're going to be choosing butter, go with the pasture raised whole butter, not the margarine, which is your processed type of fat, right? Mm -hmm. Hydrogenated, right? So you want with the, the one that is more wholesome. And, okay. you know, being mindful of portions, right? right. Portion definitely. control. Yes, mm -hmm. definitely. Mm -hmm. All righty. Well, that uh, wraps up our question, our Q&A for this presentation. Um, thank you so much, Ms. Bedla, for your time today. Um, so. Yes, thank you so much. Um, thank you everyone for your participation. Um, this does conclude our first webinar of the 2022 Hidalgo County Employee Winter Wellness Fair. Be sure to check out the rest of our online platform or join us in person at the Precinct 2 Indoor Sports Complex today and tomorrow, Saturday. If you have any questions, message us through our chat feature or email us at hidalgocounty.wellness at co.hidalgo.tx.us. And we will see you in our next uh, webinar. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.